This is me. This is my beloved wife, Sylvia. This is Sylvia's idea of sailing. This is my dream of sailing and my hope of circumnavigating the globe as a retirement project in 2029. This is Sylvia's reaction to that idea. What? You got a I am on a six year quest to convince Sylvia that a circumnavigation is a wonderful adventure, but the clock is ticking. So join me as I search for the perfect yacht that Sylvia will love and get all your ladies to subscribe and cheer Sylvia on in the comments. Welcome back to Naval Gazing at Camp David. This week's guest yacht is the next generation of a new brand from the world's largest catamaran manufacturer, the XS-11. Today, we're going to review its specifications, pricing and layout against three similar new vessels, do a full tour asking what would Sylvia say, Naval gaze and innovation and or adjustment that might make life aboard just a little easier. Have a look at the used market for three to five year old comparables and number five, we're gonna give it a Dave score and compare the results to all the previously reviewed yachts. All this fun will be sandwiched between a wine pairing from the same region as the guest yacht and a look at some favorite sample of art from that area as well. Yachts, waves, ideas, wine and art. What a civilized way to spend 30 minutes. So let's get going. Starting high above Vancouver, Canada, we fly east across North America and across the Atlantic to the northwestern shores of France in the home of last time's yacht at the Neil Shipyards. From here, we hop down the coast to the Lagoon XS Yards where the new 11 is built. Finally, we head further south to our wine pairing this week, Chateau Villabelle Airgraves 2016. Chateau Villabelle Air is located in the southern part of Graves in the parish of St. Morlin near La Brede. Villa Bel Air buildings have been listed as part of France's historical monuments and are a perfect illustration of the French Revolutionary period. In 1988, the Caz family, already owners of Chateau Lynch Baguez and Les Hommes de Pays, bought Villa Bel Air and Jean-Michael Caz undertook an important program of restoration and enlisted Daniel uh, Loss, General Technical Manager for the Caz family, and Guy Delestrac to improve the vineyards. The old parcels of land which had been pulled out were replanted and the property was equipped with a new drainage system. The production of Villa Bel Air is done with great care and the wines are traditionally fermented in stainless steel. After blending, the wines are oak aged for 12 to 15 months and each barrel is racked every three months. The wines produced are supple, elegant, well-balanced and display luscious tannins. Hmm. Oh, oh, that really is lovely. Let's go have a look at that boat. Cheers. Looking at this yacht, you know, this is the first of a brand new mold. Uh, the, the previous XS introductions, the 12 and the 15, were repurposed molds from the Lagoon side and so suffered from the weight that those vessels have. Now, this is the first real new generation. Uh, the 11 and the 14 uh, with brand new molds and uh, some more significant weight loss. Uh, they've achieved at least a couple of tons on this and, and the overall impact is, is very satisfying. Um, if you enjoy those aft helms, this is just the ticket for you. Now, hopping on to the actual numbers, we are comparing the Seacat 37, the 
FP Astrea 42, the Lagoon 42, and the XS11. And you can see in the profiles here uh, that the um, XS11 uh, certainly has trimmed something off of the uh, the actual uh, freeboard and um, they smoothed out uh, the cabin top a fair bit. Uh, now obviously this XS11 is 37 feet so it's uh, more comparable to the C-Cat than the other two in the middle but you get the general idea. Hopping onto the cabin top the XS11 has something very unique here. It has uh, almost a uh, Genot or Beneteau style retractable um, uh, cabin top or cockpit top, which really is kind of nice. I mean, if you're in the back there, you want, and uh, you've got great clear view because of your helm positions anyways, but if you want to let the sun shine into the cockpit uh, because you, you, know, you have something of a faux forward cockpit, but uh, uh, it's, it's mostly just pads on nets. Um, this really does give you a nice option. Uh, the 42 has area for a sun pad uh, on the Lagoon. The Astrea um, has a sun pad uh, up there that with, with access to it. Uh, the SeaCAD is far more of a pure sailing machine, so uh, what you've got there is, is space for your solar. Uh, moving into the actual saloon and cockpit areas, you can see for its size it has pretty staggering space in that saloon. Uh, have a look at that compared to the, the comparable size Seacat. Uh, gosh, it, it looks at least half again as big. Um, almost, almost as big as the Lagoon 42, which is surprising. Uh, the Astrea 42, again, when you get in there, I am always surprised how much space these things feel. And that Astrea 42 does feel very spacious. As we hop down into the actual hulls and the cabins, this is where the XS versus the C-Cat really, uh, you can see that XS is attempting to uh, straddle two categories here. They're, they're never going pure performance like C-Cat, um, but they're trimming size and weight and, and width off of the, the hull dimensions over the uh, Lagoon style and um, coming up with something that is a higher performance cruiser. I wouldn't call it a performance cruiser, but a higher performance cruiser uh, than just a pure cruiser. Now, the upside is you have massive width to the hulls, lots of comfort, lots of space. Um, it's a far more modern look. Uh, the aesthetic is, uh, it's, it's not exactly to my taste, but I can completely see how somebody would love this aesthetic. It's a, it's a modern aesthetic. I'm guessing Sylvia that is, is far more modern in her, in her, in her tendencies than I am, I'm far more classical, uh, would probably quite like the, the aesthetic in this cabin. The, the Lagoon 42, of course, beautiful wide cabins, uh, settees, beautiful uh, um, uh, heads there, it's, it, it's gorgeous. Uh, the FP, again, does a fantastic job. Uh, they have a, a, a massive shower in there. Now, if you look at SeaCat here, they've done something very interesting. In the passenger's hull, the port hull, you can see that they've put in a thwartship berth, even on a, a 37 foot, and they've just tagged it uh, across the hull there a bit. Um, that is unique in a, in a 37 foot and, and gives a sense of greater space than you'd anticipate, and you can reflect back on uh, our previous review specifically of this yacht, but um, just look at the hull difference. Uh, I just was chatting with the sales director at SeaCat in Italy, and he was saying that the founder uh, is actually building his own 37, not a 48, not a 56, not a 64, but he's building his own personal 37 to do a, a circumnav. Um, and I guess you can see why he would do that. The, the size is comfortable. Uh, uh, and yet it, it, it's very um, easily maneuverable, easy to handle. And I understand uh, that, that 
the sea cats handle extremely well in a heavy sea as well. So uh, not for me per se or Sylvia, but you can certainly see the purposefulness in that sea cat design. Heading to the numbers, looking across the top line, um, you can see the CCAT is the lowest there at 296. Now, I want to put a caveat on that. I just had an interview with the uh, sales director at CCAT, and uh, they're doing a lot of changes there, a lot of advancements in their design and their materials. They're going to pure epoxy, a whole lot more carbon. So this price will go up, I would anticipate it. It'll be the same as the XS or a little higher. Uh, so 296. The XS11 at 326, uh, you've got the Lagoon next at 426, and the Fountain Peugeot, uh, the highest at 466. Um, if we go to the actual uh, length of the waterline, uh, you've got the uh, CCAT at 36.4, uh, the XS at 36.29, uh, and then the uh, Fountain and Lagoon are respectively uh, 41.3 and 41. Uh, the actual draft, if we look across here, it's the excess is the lowest at 1.15 meter, uh, followed by the two, uh, the Lagoon and the Fountain at 1.25, and then the Seacat at 1.3. And obviously, uh, given its performance uh, orientation, that's not a big surprise. Uh, displacement. Here you can see the sea cat, and, and even uh, at this earlier stage, um, the weight is five ton, uh, just spectacular, and they, they're doing innovative things over there to reduce that even further that we'll discuss uh, in a later episode. Um, Next one is the XS at 9 ton. Uh, now, admittedly, these are smaller vessels than the Lagoon and the Fountain. We will look at the Lagoon 40 here in a minute just to get a, an accurate uh, comparative. But they've shed about 2 ton in what they've done with the XS 11. Um, upwind sail area, uh, the Fountain leads at 106 square meters. Uh, then you've got the Lagoon at 90. Uh, the CCAT at 78 and the XS at 77. Down in tankage, uh, it's the fountain that leads the pack with 470 liters of fuel and 700 liters of fresh water. It is followed uh, by the uh, excess at 400 and 300, uh, then the Lagoon at 300 and 300, and uh, the Sea Cat at 200 of fuel and 300 of water. Now, having said that, you probably don't need as much fuel on the Sea Cat. Down into the more technical areas now, we've got uh, the hull construction, which is uh, on the CCAT is the best, uh, foam core sandwich construction, vacuum infused epoxy, vinyl resin, and I believe it's pure epoxy now. Quadrax lead glass, but uh, they're putting a whole lot more carbon into the CCATs now. Next up, we're looking at the actual uh, performance indicators. So uh, if we look at sail area over displacement, which is an in indicator of power. Obviously you've got the CCAT in the lead at 29.03. Uh, next uh, is the Fountain Peugeot at 21.11 and generally you're going to see Fountain uh, leads the pack among the traditional uh, um, uh, production cats as far as their uh, performance indicators. Next is the XS which is 18.09 and trust me that's a whole lot better than the old 40. And finally you got the Lagoon 42 at 17.35. Going to displacement over length which is an indicator of heaviness. Uh, again CCAT way out in front at uh, 102. Uh, sorry I again this is like golf. In this category it's the lowest wind. So 102.3 uh, followed again by the Fountain Peugeot at 160.97. Uh, then you've got the, surprisingly, the Lagoon at 72.82 and the um, Excess at 185.37. Um, now, going to our friends over at uh, the Catamaran Show uh, or catamaranshow.com, uh, Andreas Norland has put together a calculation uh, that estimates the vessel's performance uh, as a percentage of wind speed. And here you can see the CCAT 37 is forecasting to do 76% of wind speed, uh, followed by the excess at 57, then uh, the Lagoon at uh, 56, and surprisingly the Fountain Peugeot at 48%.
Now, I'd like to highlight what uh, Andreas Nor Norlin and his wife are doing over at catamaranshow.com. This is an exceptional site. It actually makes my brain hurt just imagining the amount of work that's gone into assembling this. He's uh, gathering together every single uh, catamaran he can find, um, gathering every piece of data on it. You can see here we're um, going through the process of uh, just showing you how we can select three catamarans in his comparison model uh, so easily to check out. And in this case, we're looking at the XS11, the uh, CCAT 37, and the Fountain Peugeot 40. You can see that you've got layouts, you've got videos, you've got every single kind of comparative data. You've actually also got access to um, the polars when they're available. You've got access to uh, his percentage of wind speed calculation. Um, basically, uh, anything that you really want to see, if he was able to find it, he's got it here. Uh, he's even got uh, photos of the interior, exterior, um, you name it. Uh, this is a tremendous resource and you can see just how easy it is for us to flip around and find different uh, models to compare to. So here we're switching up to the Lagoon 40 so that you can see now uh, uh, here we've got the actual uh, tonnage that we looked at on there and you can see that the uh, excess has actually shaved just under two tons off the tonnage. This is a tremendous tool and if you can reach out to Andre and Andreas and give him uh, any updates, any new information, this is a, a great tool for the industry and ourselves as shoppers. Okay, what would Sylvia say? Moving on board, I actually think Sylvia might like the visuals on this. It's small for us but um, for what it is I mean look at this it, the funky uh, carbon or uh, composite wheel in a unique color your decks are clear um, you've got wonderful visibility from this helm station right down the yacht you can uh, have a wonderful sense of connection with the water directly behind you you can feel it you can hear the the, the water as you pick up speed um, you got a lovely drop down seat that you didn't see and uh, some nice biminis over the helms are available you can see how the seat drops down it's really kind of cool um, act full access to all your lines uh, you know very comfortable to sail this vessel uh, and you know just an overall really nice uh, sailors boat uh, you can see there in the center of the um, the bimini uh, that pullback uh, element that allows you to uh, op let the sun shine in um, cockpit yeah, it's roomy, it's comfortable. You get a nice settee on the back. Um, those drop down seats, the helms give you more um, seating space. Uh, walking up, uh, you're a little light on handholds, um, but you get up here, you've got the dolphin seats. Um, your uh, chain is exposed um, on top of the fiberglass, which you know I'm not a fan of. But uh, let's go to some navel gazing now. So I don't understand why everybody uh, in this industry wants to do this with their head sail. Uh, it, it's uncomfortable, risky, uh, prone to issues, and just a whole lot of effort. We have the technology. Now, we have the technology, and here it is. We got built-in uh, head sail code furlers in fully installed and integrated. We're not even talking about the ones that you unplug like I showed in a previous episode. These are fully integrated. You press a button. This, instead of what you just saw, is what you do to, to, to uh, bring in your head sail. Why would I ever want to do anything else? Now, um, Tamash at uh, Exquisite uh, has these built into his yacht. The folks over at Balance are now building them into their yachts. 
So this isn't something that is uh, for lazy sailors and not approved by the more performance-oriented catamaran group. This is technology that really should be on board, making using a head sail in light airs so much easier, making jibing so much easier, and making the whole experience for me as a 60-year-old that much more attractive. Look at that. Why would you want anything else? I love it when a plan comes together. Okay, back on board. Uh, here is your, your faux uh, um, forward cockpit, although they've done a nice job here. Not, not only do they have the factory um, uh, cushions, but they put some nice cup holders in there and a little bit of teak. Um, again, the, the chain to the windlass on top of the gel coat, not my favorite. Uh, I see stains and that would drive my anal retentive uh, uh, personality nuts. You've got your self tacker. Um, you get easy access up onto the cabin top. Like it's just a, a very comfortable form factor. Um, the handholds, again, are a little light. I'd like to see uh, a lot more along there. But look at your helm position here. Just imagine how comfortable that would be. So let's now move into the saloon. Um, bearing in mind, this is a 37. Look at the space in here. Uh, I think they've done a brilliant job. Uh, I would probably um, take out that table and put in more of a coffee table and, and live in the outside, so uh, maximizing my sense of space inside. Very similar to what Fountain has done. Um, the, obviously, you can see all of the padding on the ceiling and that finish is taken away. You've got a much more minimalist. You've got a lot more exposed uh, and fared glass, which you know I'm not a fan of, but some folks are. Um, you've got a, a a beautiful um, athwart ship berth here, very comfortable, uh, lots of space. Um, the cabinetry, as always, is very nice, very well done. Um, little, you know, funky little pull tabs for the handles, not my cat cup of tea, but there are those who would love it. You have a full dry head. Um, there's, you know, there's not a lot to complain about here, and you are getting enhanced performance with this vessel. Now, I know there'll be those bristling at me using the word performance in conjunction with anything out of the Lagoon Yards, but it, you, it, it is better performance. Uh, it's a better performing cruising catamaran. Um, and, you know, the modernist look to this, that aesthetic, very pleasing, very nice. They've done a great job. Uh, there is nothing really to complain about here. They've maximized use of space. They got a little chart table, but I mean, honestly, how much do you need? Uh, and lots of visibility all the way around. That galley, uh, it's not a U-shaped galley. It's not huge, but it's a 37-foot boat. Uh, heading now down into the owner's hull. Um, you've got, uh, again, a very nice berth there, nice desk area, great ventilation, great windows. Um, you've got little things like the, uh, the, the magazine holders. Um, good, good level of storage. You've got the privacy door there. And now let's go into this head. Uh, you got lots of room on the countertops for the pharmacy, uh, and you've got a beautiful separate shower. Uh, you know, overall, they've done a good job. They're, they're taking a big risk trying to straddle uh, two areas, but I mean, this is a, a cruising cat that's a little sportier, gives you fabulous helm positions for the sportier person among us with great feel, great connection to the water. Um, not a lot that I can complain about here for the right person. Moving to pre-owned comparables. Our first comparable here is the Fountain Peugeot Lucia 40. Bearing in mind that we're, uh, when we look at sail away comparables for our new yacht, we take the base plus 50%. So on the XS11, that puts us at 508.560. So the 2020, a two-year-old Fountain Peugeot Lucia 40 at 38 feet, they're asking 599. Um, the, the Lucia is a nice boat, uh, and you're going to have more toys on there, but it's two years old. It totally depends on your taste and application. Uh, I would tend to go with the um, 
XS on this one. Moving to our next yacht, we're looking at a 2020 Lagoon 40. Um, this two-year-old boat, 39 feet, very comparable to the XS. You're looking at US asking a 574-900. Now you'll have a few more toys on there, uh, but 508-560 versus 574-900. Um, it, it would have to be some very specific personal uh, preferences that would drive me to the used boat on this one. Uh, the Bally Cat Space 2020, a 38 foot, two year old boat. They're looking for 474, 544. Um, and uh, depending on the condition of this boat, obviously this is definitely not the same uh, cruising capability or uh, performance capability of the XS, uh, but it's a very nice boat with a lot of space in it. Um, I'd have to look at that one really carefully against the, the 508. Um, let's look now at a, uh, a Corsair Trimaran. This is a 37 foot. They're asking 249 uh, versus the 508, 560. Now the difference here is, I, well, I shouldn't say you couldn't, but living on a Corsair Tri at 37 feet would be challenging. Um, I mean, living on the, the XS uh, 11 would be challenging, but nowhere near as challenging. Um, so if I was just into to this for sort of weekend stuff, I, I would probably lean towards the Corsair on this. I'm saving half the money and uh, probably twice the fun fa sailing it. Um, finally, let's look at apples to apples comparison for an XS11, a 2021 one year old boat. They're asking 555 against a brand new sail away at 508. Uh, it's just indicative of the times that we're in. Okay. Mono Hull Heresy. What are we going to look at here? This one, uh, I just add 20% um, to the length to get a comparable. So we're looking at 45 foot yachts. Our first up is a C45 Bavaria. They're looking 469 versus 508. Um, I'd probably do the 508 on the cat. Uh, you know, the uh, 45 foot mono, it's hard to make it uh, as nice as, as, as a um, 37 foot uh, cat for sure. Uh, next up is the Beneteau 45 at 374. Uh, so you're saving a chunk of cash here. It's an 18, so it's a four year old boat. Um, if I had the cash, I'd still go with the excess. Finally, we've got a uh, 2019 Catalina 445, 44 foot boat. They're asking 460 versus our 508. Uh, now this one I have a sweet spot for because Catalina do an utterly brilliant job of their interiors. Not a fan of their external aesthetic, but the interiors you, you can't argue in. Uh, this would appeal to me on a very, very deep level. So I would probably lean towards the Catalina and uh, just hope that Sylvia would deal with the uh, healing action. Okay, let's go to the Dave score. Where did our yacht end up? Well, it, it's not a big surprise. I mean, uh, the size really restricts it on the Dave score simply because I'm looking for a liveaboard for five years and something that'll get uh, uh, Sylvia out in the water. By the way, don't mention five years to her. Um, the XS11 uh, ended up at uh, 66, putting it right with the Lagoon 42, the Leal 47, um, the FP42, uh, just behind the Lagoon 42. 46, the Bally 4.6, the Naughty Tech 44, and that, you know, honestly, that sounds about right. The Naughty Tech 44, uh, it, 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 you can't argue with their interior. It's absolutely gorgeous. And we're going to have uh, a second look at a Naughty Tech. Uh, our, our previous one, the 44, was in the light wood. And I'm telling you, I saw the dark wood, and we're going to have a second look, and it was spectacular. So I think the placement of this, given my applications, what we're looking for is about right. You've got uh, the interior uh, elegance at about a six. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a 
the modern aesthetic. So when I say elegance, you really, it's so subjective. But for a modern aesthetic, the elegance is nice. Um, the exterior, uh, I'd give it a seven simply because uh, they've done a great job with the faux front cockpit. They, I love that pulled back uh, convertible top. And honestly, I know I'd probably hate it in a transatlantic, but I love the, the positioning of those helms. Uh, and the, the drop down seats are very cool. Uh, comfort on the interior, we gave it a seven, and, a six, sorry. And on, it just the size restricts it. And, and the modern aesthetic generally isn't as comfortable. Um, but the exterior seven, again, there's so many features to love on the exterior for comfort. Uh, the way the, the factory pads work on the front deck, that pull back uh, sunshade. You know, there's just so many nice things there. Quality, I'd give it a seven. I mean, Lagoon do a nice job. Job. Um, when you've got the level of equipment and, and the production lines and the professionalism that they do, uh, you can turn out a production product that is good quality. Uh, performance, we'll give it a seven. You know, it's, it's more performance-y than <laughs> the Lagoon line, uh, um, but not really a performance cruiser. Uh, condo is six. Simply, you can't you can't get a condo sense in in something that small. Uh, the Geek Score about a six. I might bump that up just given those aft uh, helm chairs that drop down and that pull back sunshade. Uh, the cup holders up in the full cockpit. I, I, I like it. Uh, value for money. I'm going to give it a seven. Um, and you know, and again, that is what do you value? So uh, in my mind, it gets a seven, and that gives it a total Dave score of 66 in a in a nice group. Finally, I hope you enjoyed the yacht. Let's look at some of the art from that region that influences these designs. This week, we're looking at view of part of the port and the docks at Bordeaux. Bit of a long name, but what can you do? It's known as the Chartons and Bacalan oil painting on canvas made in 1804 by Pierre Lacour Père. Born in April 14, 1745 in Bordeaux, France, Pierre's first artistic studies were in the workshop of the engraver André Laval. In 1764, he went to Paris to continue his studies with the painter Joseph Marie Venn. He was awarded second place in the Prix de Rome of 1769. He spent some time in Rome, sometime around 1771, and became an aggregé at the Académie Nationale des Sciences, Belle Letters et Arts de Bordeaux in 1772. Two years later, he was named an Academian. His first exhibit at the Salon came in 1796, the same year he was named a corresponding member of the Academia des Beaux-Arts. Three years later, he was elected to the Academy of Sciences, in, and in 1801, he founded the Muse des Beaux-Arts de Bordeaux and became its first curator. In 1803, he became a professor and from 1804 until his death, served as the director of the School of Painting and Design. In addition, he was placed in charge of restoring the Palais Rohan. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our wine, our navel gazing, our beautiful yacht, and finally our art from this wonderful region which is the birthplace for so many beautiful catamarans. Have a great week and we'll see you with something a little special next week. Cheers.